This video is the first of three videos where we'll talk about bootstrapping the yield curve. And the word bootstrapping, what it means is we're going to use the yield curve in order to try to figure out what the bond market thinks interest rates or inflation will be in the future. In this first video, we'll just bootstrap one particular forward rate. That is, we're going to use the 10-year treasury and the 5-year treasury to try to figure out what does the bond market think 5-year treasury rates will be in 5 years. That's known as the 5-year forward 5-year rate. So how we do this is we essentially think about um, two transactions that we could do. Here we have the interest rates for the current uh, treasury curve. 1-year treasuries are paying just 0.12% and 30-year treasuries are paying 3.67%. So the two treasuries we're going to focus in on are the 10-year and the 5-year. And in looking at these two rates, we can see what the market thinks interest rates are going to be in the future because we could just buy this 10-year treasury. If we did, we'd be locked in at 2.61% for 10 years. Or we could buy the five-year treasury, in which case we'd be locked in to 1.39% for five years. But after five years, we would have to reinvest that for another five years. And the rate we would reinvest in should make us indifferent between investing at the 10-year treasury today or buying the five-year treasury today and reinvesting in another five-year treasury in five years. So let's look at those two transactions. We, have the, we can buy the 10-year treasury today and lock in 2.61% for 10 years or we could buy the 5 year treasury today and lock in 1.39% for 5 years and then buy another five-year treasury in five years. So the question we ask with bootstrapping is what rate would the market need to pay in five years on a five-year treasury so that we're indifferent between these two transactions? So what we're going to do is first say what would be our ending portfolio with the 10-year treasury? And that's going to be, if we started with $1,000, that would be $1,000 times 1 plus the 10-year rate raised to the 10th power, or that portfolio would be worth $1,293.89. The ending portfolio with a 5-year treasury at the end of 5 years, that portfolio is going to be worth I'm sorry that portfolio will be worth a thousand dollars times one plus the five-year rate raised to the fifth power so that portfolio will be worth one thousand seventy one point four six and so what is the difference what interest rate do we need such that if we reinvest that 1,071.46 in five years in a five-year treasury, such that at the end of the next five years, we would have a portfolio worth 1,293.98. And so we can essentially just compare the two and, and, and take the difference. And so what we'll do is we'll take the 1,293.89 and divide it by the 1,071.46. That means we need to make hundred or make 21 percent over those five years but that 21 percent is not annualized so let's annualize this so we'll take the ending value for the 10 year divided by the ending value for the five years we'll raise that to the one divided by five in order to get the annual rate subtract one and that rate is 3.84 percent so let's try it if we take that 3.84 percent let's let's take the ending portfolio reinvested another five years but now what we're going to do is we're going to take that 10 1071.46 and we're now going to reinvest that at 3.84 percent 
for five years and see what our ending portfolio is there and when I hit the dollar amount sure enough it's exactly the same as the 10 years so our two portfolio examples are we can buy one five-year treasury for five years at 1.39 percent if then after five years we reinvest at 3.84 percent we will have the exact same ending portfolio as if we had invested for 10 years at 2.61 percent this 3.84 percent is known as the five-year forward five-year rate it is essentially the what we expect, what the bond market expects the five-year treasury rate to be in five years. And to actually calculate it, here's the actual formula. We do in the denominator one, one plus the 10-year rate, whatever the longer rate is, raise it a tenth, divided by one plus the five-year rate, raise to the fifth and we're going to take that entire amount and raise it to the one divided by five which is the rate we're looking for the five-year rate in five years subtract one and there's a formula so hopefully you can see that formula one plus the ten-year rate raise to the tenth one plus the five-year rate raise to the fifth all of that to the one-fifth minus one it's important that in the in the numerator the interest rate you use is the longest period you have, 10 years. The denominator is the rate that you also have today for the shorter period. In this case, it's the five-year rate, or we could have used the three-year rate, but here's the five-year rate. And then the one-fifth is the forecast rate we're, we're looking for in the future. So essentially, um, this number here in the denominator, that five, that means we're going to invest for five years. And then this one-fifth means what's the rate going to be after that five years? What will the rate be for the ne expected for the next five years? So this is the formula that we use. Hopefully when I hit enter, I'll get the same answer. And sure enough, that's the same answer. Now the confusion students have, and I've made it a little confusing with my example, is my denominator has raised to the fifth power, and I raised the entire thing to the one-fifth power, and sometimes students get confused about what number to new use in the denominator versus what to use here. In this case, they're both fives. So in the next video, I'll show you how to know which rate to use where, and we'll actually, we'll actually do bootstrapping of the entire yield curve so we can forecast several future rates.